811 now demolitions expected to get underway today at the site of Monday's collapse in the Bronx. Forensic engineers on the scene this morning securing the area before crews start taking down what's really left of that collapsed corner. The question remains though, what caused that corner to give way and were there signs that were possibly overlooked? Joining us this morning with some insight is architect Carolyn Cast, who is the director of facade compliance at the Howard Zimmerman firm right here in the city. So good morning to you, Carolyn. How you doing? Good morning. Doing well. How are you? Carolyn, this is such a talker, right? I know the investigation continues and the demolition today will focus just really on that corner of that building. But will that put the rest of the structure at risk? How do you delicately take down just a piece without really damaging the rest of the building? So um, I haven't actually been to the building. Uh, I've obviously seen a lot of uh, photos and videos and things like that. So I can't say specifically, but uh, you know, the DOB has done an extensive structural evaluation of the building and assuming safety measures are being installed and um, you know, shoring is put in place and things like that. Uh, it should be okay, at least as a temporary means, and hopefully the residents would be able to get their belongings back. You know, but city. I'm sure more more investigation will have to go on yeah. before it could actually be habitable. Sure. City records indicate that the facade was undergoing repairs, but is that enough to trigger a collapse of this magnitude? Like, what would have had to been going on during the drilling? What would they have had to hit for this to actually happen? Typically, this doesn't happen. Um, you know, sometimes demolition can cause a problem. Uh, maybe there's an incident where something fails or we find something that's structurally inadequate. But um, usually when something like that occurs, you know, a, it's before a major issue happens and it's observed in advance and we'll do something to avoid this issue, this type of issue. But, um, you know, I, again, can't say exactly what the situation was. I have my own thoughts, but um, I think this is kind of a very unique situation. Yeah, Usually it doesn't occur. Obviously we're waiting for the investigation to play out to find the exact cause, right? So, so when you look at it though, and I'm no expert, you're the expert, it appears that maybe a, a support beam was not where it should have been or, or there could have been some sort of damage to that specific section that would have caused it to pancake like it did. So when in your expertise here and looking at that, what could have went wrong? Was it a support beam or whatever when they're when they're doing that facade work? I I think it may have been um, at the base of the building. There is a there per. Google Maps <laughs> history, there's a large vertical crack by the storefront in the brick. Um, one of the main things that happens, and also from the previous report, there was uh, deteriorated mortar at that corner as well. And one of the major things that causes issue to buildings in New York City is uh, water infiltration. And this building had complained of leaks previously. It deteriorates the mortar, which is what's holding the brick together. And also um, New York City goes through a lot of freezing and thawing yeah. during the winter. And so when the water is infiltrating and you have a freeze thaw, you have expansion of the water. And so those items adding up could deteriorate the structural element of the building, which in this situation is the facade. So based on that explanation alone, it doesn't sound very safe for residents to be able to go back in. Yeah, I, I again, I can't say I haven't been to the building, but um, hopefully the I, I, I know the DOB is very extensive, especially in situations like this. So, um, you know, I, I assume after the demolition of this side, the, they may be able to return at some point. But yeah. usually we have worked on evacuation buildings previously, and it does take a long time. You know, there's a lot of talk when you look at things like this. You know, of course, everybody worries like if there's another building that could be next, right? After that major collapse in Florida where we said the whole condo complex came down, there was the parking garage in lower Manhattan, now this, right? Residents worry, yeah. since you live in a city of buildings that need to be inspected quite often, are they next, right? So, so really what should people look for in their own buildings to maybe flag? I mean, it really depends on the type of building that you're in. Um, so it could be something as much as, you know, systemic cracks, uh, you know, large gaps in things. Uh, if you've got, 
shifting and moving. Um, you know, well, that's one of the th the reasons that this um, the facade inspection and safety program is in place is to have someone catch these things. Um, I would also say bowing parapet walls, walls that are shifting or moving, things like that. Mm. Um, those are all major red flags to me. All right, Carolyn Cass, thanks so much for sharing your expertise. Great insight today. Thank you very much.